Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today's project is to install some more drip irrigation in our landscape. I have one line of drip irrigation that we installed last year and uh, it is not connected automatically up to a timer. I have to run my hose to it to get it to run all the time. Today's project is to get automatic timers set up and start at least installing multiple zones of drip irrigation on auto timers. So come with me and let's see how we're going to get this project underway. Now you might wonder why I'm starting with a shovel. Um, well, honestly, truth in advertising, I'm going to be filming this video in different sessions across maybe different times of today or maybe even different days. And so the first thing I'm going to ta tackle is figuring out how to get water off of that spigot that's over there by the, um, right there by the grill. I need it to come off that spigot, go underground under this brick pathway and out into the property. So that's the first step that I'm going to tackle. Now, I have a photograph of when our sidewalk was being laid. The contractors actually did put in a PVC pipe for me underneath the sidewalk. And it's somewhere coming off of right around this area, right underground, right around down there. And it comes <clears throat> under the sidewalk and out the other side so that purposefully they put that in there for me so that I could run water or electrical under there if I ever wanted to install landscape lighting or irrigation in the garden. So I'm really glad to know that that's there, but I have to find it. And the photograph isn't clear whether it's going to be on this side of the fence or that side of the fence. I remember that the sidewalk and the pipe was put in first and then the next spring the fence was put in and when the fence guys were digging the holes for the post right here at this gate, they found the pipe. But I don't recall if they found it on that side or this side of the fence post. So I'm gonna dig down with my shovel near the fence posts and see if I can find that PVC pipe that was laid under this sidewalk and hopefully I'll be able to find it. I know it's there. I just don't want to make too big of a mess looking for it. So let's see what we can find. So the pipe is going to come off near that window and come, it's going to start right here and go under the sidewalk and come out over there. But it's either going to start right here or right over there on the other side of the fence. So I'm going to dig here and hopefully find it. But if not, then I'll go over there and dig and see if I can find it. I don't see any sign yet. I believe it would be under this landscape fabric. But I think it's going to be more that way because I remember the fence guys were talking about how they had to go right beside it. So maybe it's over here. I don't see it. That's a rock. All right, I haven't found it yet, so it must be on the other side. All right, so we're gonna look on this side of the fence post to see if we can find it. But I distinctly remember the fence guys saying they hit it when they were digging the pence, the pole. Mm. But I don't know if they hit them both or just one. When you want to hit an underground pipe, you can't find it. Okay, after a lot of digging, one pipe cut into by accident uh, and a lot of frustration, we've determined there isn't a conduit pipe already under this sidewalk. We dug here, didn't find it, but we did find the downspout, which goes down under here and goes under and comes out right there. We found it over there and it goes down the hill down to the stage. Found that, but we found no other conduit. We have dug and dug and dug and dug and dug. And there's no other conduit pipes. Okay, friends, I'm back. It's like a week later. I have not yet solved the 
how do I get my supply lines from the house out into the lawn problem. I'm going to have to tunnel under the sidewalk and that's a project I don't feel like tackling today. So what I thought I would do today is run some of the lines and just get them set up so that when I do have water connected to them, I'll be ready to go. This is going to be a multi-day project clearly. And so it's all good. I'll just get some of it done today. I thought I would share with you the piece and pieces and parts that I have lined up here that I'll be able to start using today. I still have to order some other things, but we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, first of all, I have several hundred feet of half inch black supply lines. I have some left over from last year that I pulled out from down behind the stage where it spent all winter. And then I bought a couple of hundred of feet of uh, new as well. So I've got plenty of black supply lines, I think, to cover the entire property in as much irrigation supply lines as I'm going to need. But if I end up needing more, I'll get some more. All right. And now I also have some quarter inch black supply line. I have some left over from last season and I bought a new roll of it. This is a um, hundred feet of it here. So this is what I run from the half inch out to some of my trees or shrubs um, as a supply line. I also have quarter inch drip line. I have some of it that's brown. This is a hundred feet of brown drip line and I have some black drip line that's left over from last year. I found out last year that I like having it brown instead of black. The black drip tubing is very easy for me to mix up and accidentally cut it wrong and treat it more like a supply line and vice versa. So I'm going to use up the black drip line that I have, but from here forward, I'm going to try my hardest to make sure that my drip lines are brown and my supply lines are black and that will save some heartache in the future from mistakes. I also have several pieces of connectors and equipment here to go along with it. I have about a hundred um, T connectors for quarter inch. I have some straight couplers for quarter inch. And I have some goof plugs or basically end stoppers for quarter inch drip line. I also have the same kind of things, but for the half inch. So I've got some T connectors for half inch, a few, but not very many straight on couplers for the half inch. And I have a bunch of um, T's, I guess I bought a lot of T's. And, oh, I have 50 elbows, 40 T's, and 10 or so straight connectors for the half inch. And then I also picked up, I believe, five or six of these valves. So I'll be able to control the supply line, half inch supply line, via a valve. And if I don't need to water a particular small zone, subzone, I can turn that off with this valve and then turn it back on when it does need to be watered. So these valves will provide a little bit of extra flexibility in how I water throughout the season. Um, let's see what else. I've got uh, another, so for each hose outlet on the house, I'm going to have a water filter, a pressure regulator, and a backflow preventer. All of this will be right off of the hose right before the timer, which is a one to four splitter. So I, and I'll go get them in a second. So I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, I also have a couple of connectors. This is a swivel connector. I've got an elbow and I've got a straight connector. So, um, and then I have several, probably a hundred of these landscape staples. I have a hole puncher that punches holes into the half inch supply lines. This could also be used for three quarter inch supply line, but I don't have any three quarter inch supply line. And then I also got um, several of these metal ring connectors. And what I'm planning to do there is follow the advice of um, the Garden Answer folks where they put these metal rings around each of their um, hose connections and then use this tool to crimp them shut and that prevents them from blowing apart under the water pressure. Okay, I have two timers, one for each of my hose faucets. And what I'm planning to do is put this at the end of my series of uh, important um, kit. So I'll have the water filter, the pressure regulator, and the backflow preventer all coming off the hose. And then the next thing in line will be this timer. And then it'll be able to go out four ways. 
um, so I'll be able to have four zones available to me on each of the hoses. Now I have two hoses, one on the front of the house, one on the back of the house. I mean spigot is what I mean. So I'll have eight zones possible all told. Now this is the DIY version, the homeowner's version. If you hire a contractor, an irrigation contractor to work with you, or if you're smarter than me, then you might be able to use more professional grade equipment, more commercial grade equipment, dig your little access boxes under the ground and get it all set up that way on an electronic circuit with an electronic connector in your garage or on the side of your house or something like that. I figured I don't need all that fancy footwork. I'm just going to use this timer. Okay, so all of these supplies I ordered from dripdepot.com. Now you can just go straight to dripdepot.com and buy the stuff that you think you need. They have a lot of really um, useful information about how to get yourself set up. They also offer an incredibly wide range of irrigation supplies. It can be a little bit daunting, but I do have an affiliate program membership with them. So if you go to the description box in the video down below and you click on the link that I provide there, then I will at no cost to you, I'll get a little bit of an affiliate um, payback if you order through that link. You don't have to order through that link, but if you feel led to do so, I would appreciate it. Up to you. Okay, so <clears throat> dripdepot.com. I need to get myself some half inch drip tubing and I will be making that order very soon but today what I'm going to do is get set up with my supply lines and um, so with that in mind let's just get underway. All right so my strategy today is to get this half inch supply tubing run along the length of this north lawn flower border or shrub border and um, I don't know yet if I'm going to be hooking this up to a zone that's controlled from the back or a zone that's controlled from the front. The problem with the front is I'm gonna to have to tunnel under our front sidewalk, our front walk, in order to get to the hose. So I don't have a, brain, a brainy idea about how to do that yet. So I have a couple of ideas. I'm just unwilling to do the work that's involved in those ideas. So I'm looking for the easiest solution. So what I'm gonna to do today is actually just run the supply line from the sidewalk up to roughly where the um, last uh, Dragon Lady Holly got planted this season. And I'm gonna end the line there. I'm not plugging it in today anyway. And if I decide to run it from the backyard, I'll be able to couple it with a backyard zone supply line. And if I'm running it from the front yard, I'll be able to bend the corner and couple it with a front yard supply line. So I'm gonna leave myself some flexibility there. So right now I'm just running this half inch tubing from the sidewalk up to near the fence. Now this tubing is very strong and as you might be able to see, it kinks if you bend it. Um, so on a sunny day, this would be a little bit easier. We'd be able to lay this out in the sun and it would um, warm up a little bit and be a little bit more flexible. On a cool day like today, we're gonna to have to be very careful to not kink it as we lay it. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'll probably have to cut out these kinked sections and couple um, the remainders together so that we don't have any kinks in the line. So uh, which way should I start? I guess I'll start over here. I have my supply of landscape staples here. I'm gonna be dragging this along with me and tacking it down as I go. Oh, one more thing. Um, it's probably, hello, <laughs> it's probably a better plan to lay your drip line and then put your mulch on top of it. Yeah, that's probably what you should do. So don't be like me. Okay. All right, so this is the end. Right here. So, I really don't want to kink it at all. Now what I'm planning to do is unroll this to prevent kinks from happening and we'll see if I can be successful in that effort. I'm putting landscape staples down every now and again to keep it in place where I put it. Okay. 
All right, I've now hit this spot where it's totally kinked up and I'm gonna cut this off here and do a coupling so that I can get rid of this really badly kinked area. Okay, so can you see this line comes from over there, comes here and it hits all of these really tight kinks and I don't really want really tight kinks. So I'm gonna cut that right there. And I'm going to move this whole big pile down this way. So I had one, two, three, four, five really bad kinks right there. So I'm just going to cut those kinks out. And I'm not using this piece anymore for anything. It's just not really usable. So now I can couple these two pieces together, but I need to do it over there so that I don't, oh look, I still have kinks here, but I think the water will be able to rush through there. And those aren't good. You know what? Why take chances? I'm gonna cut these kinks out as well. All right, so I'll be putting these two together, but let me move this so I don't create new kinks. All right, now. Those will join together. All right, so I've got a straight coupler, which have these uh, barbs on it. So basically you push that on there and you push this end on here. But first I'm gonna put on one of these metal rings so that I'll be able to tighten that joint. Okay, now when you're in the sun, this job is fairly easy, but on a cool day, it can be a little trickier to get them all the way on there. There we go. Now I'm going to pull this up here. Easier said than done. Pull it up there. Come on now. I got my manicure done for my contest weekend and I'm totally ruining it now. All right, there we go. And so now I'll use this pinching tool, which I don't know what its real name is, to uh, crimp that together. Open wide. And now squeeze tight and crimp that tight. So now that plastic won't come off of here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Put a crimp on there. Push this on there. There we go. And now I'll crimp this nice and tight. There we go. And now the water pressure won't pull this connection apart. Now I can continue down the line and if I find any other places where the tube has gotten too crimped, I'll be able to do the same repair to the line and continue on with my supply to the sidewalk. Okay, I've reached the end of the line, so I don't need any more here, so I'm just gonna cut. All right, and now to cap this off, you could purchase an end cap, which pushes on there and has a screw lid um, to close things off. Or you could do what I'm gonna do, which is just fold it over and tape it in place. I'm using electrical tape. I suppose you could use duct tape or any other, like Gorilla Tape or something like that. I'm just gonna use electrical tape. I'm going to bend this over and tape it shut. All right, and now we've got the main supply line run out from that way toward the house. So now I'll be able to tap into this supply line and run drip irrigation to any of the shrubs or trees that I want to. Now that I have the supply line run throughout the entire flower border, now I need to run my drip tubing. Now the drip tubing has little emitters embedded within the tube that is pressure regulated so that it will put out a certain amount of water per hour 
when you have the pressure in the water line accurate. So the ones that I have put out a half a gallon of water per hour out of each emitter. So you take the emitter tube and you run it in the area where you want to have the water and then you turn it on and if after an hour you would have a half a gallon of water in each spot where everywhere that there's an emitter. My emitter tubing that I have right now is quarter inch diameter and it's emitters every 12 inches. I plan to get some half inch emitter tubing every six inches with emitters and that will be a more even coverage um, in certain areas but I'll use the 12 inch emitters in certain applications. There are also other types of emitters that you can get. There are some that you can um, just put right into the side of the supply line and it emits straight out like a little button plug thing. And as far as how to set up the drip around a flower bed, you have some choices. You can ring each tree and shrub with its own ring of emitter tubing that comes off of the supply line. You can run a long tube of emitter tubing uh, and kind of create a network or a grid and just saturate the entire area or you can do a combination of both. And really it's a matter of what you have planted, what its water needs are, and how creative you want to be in using your materials. Also, you could probably factor in cost of the materials and figure out what is the best, least costly way to get the right amount of water to the right places. Today, I only have quarter inch emitters every 12 inches. That's what I have to offer. So while I wait for my half inch tubing with six inch emitters to come, I'm gonna go ahead and ring each of these trees and shrubs with some emitter tubing that I already have here. Then later, I may choose, I may not choose to add some half inch emitter tubing in here to feed the perennials and annuals that I'll be putting in here throughout the rest of the season. Here's a close up look at the emitter tubing. It's black plastic. I don't know if I'm focused or not. And then every 12 inches, it has one of these pressure regulating emitters. You can feel them, it's a little bump inside the tubing. And there are holes out of which the water comes. And that happens every 12 inches. Now, I have in the past used soaker hoses, you know, those black rubber hoses that weep water out all along the length of the hose. In my experience, if I put one of those on a hill, then most of the water runs down the tube to the bottom of the tubing, and the area of the soaker hose that's at the top of the hill gets little to no water and all the water goes down the hill. The good thing about these pressure regulated emitters is that you can put this on a very dramatic incline and still, because they're pressure regulated, they won't have all the water run down to the bottom of the tube. The, the emitters at the top of the hill will get the same amount of water that they're supposed to get. So that's why I really like using the drip irrigation with the pressure regulated emitters embedded into the tubing more than I like soaker hoses these days. Okay, so I've got my supply line running down the length of the border and now I'm going to tap into it using the black quarter inch supply line and and this quarter inch drip line. Now I prefer brown drip line so that I don't get them mixed up but I have black today so I'll be getting brown in the future. Okay so to do this, I have one straight coupler and one goof plug or end plug. Now, I'm going to put those in a place where I won't lose them. Where am I going to put them so I don't lose them? Uh, I'm going to put them in my pocket so I don't lose them. Okay. Now, uh, this one is so close that I could just take a length of emitter tubing and tap it right into and wrap it around this shrub. So that's too easy. So let me show you this shrub getting some emitter tubing. So what I'm gonna do is, okay, I forgot to mention one other thing. This great thing about using drip tube irrigation is that you can customize how much water each plant gets. For example, this shrub is a sugar tip Rose of Sharon. It likes average water. Down the way, I've got a button bush and a little Henry sweet spire, and I've got some winterberry and a couple of other things that really like to be moist. They like to stay wetter than some of these others. And I've got the Dragon Lady Hollies, three of those, 
and they kind of don't need to stay as moist as everything else. In fact, they might be at risk of rotting if they stay as wet as everything else. So I can put fewer emitters on the Dragon Ladies, more emitters on everything else, and extra, extra emitters on the things that want to stay wet. And that way every plant gets what it needs during my time during which I'm watering. So if I water for an hour and I put two emitters on the dragon lily, it'll get one gallon of water per hour. If I put three emitters on the sugar tip, it'll get a gallon and a half in an hour. And if I put four emitters on the button bush, it'll get two gallons of water in that same hour. And so every plant gets what it needs. So for most of these plants, I'm going to be putting um, I'm not sure how many, but I'll put the same number of emitters on each one. If I put more emitters, then I have to run it for less amount of time. So uh, it's a balancing act of how much time you want to spend with your water turned on at the house. I'm going to make for the Sugar Tip Rose of Sharon, I'm going to make an emitter line that's got four emitters on it. That's two gallons of water per hour. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to snip this off right here. And you could choose to connect it into a circle with a T and then off the T comes your supply line. But lately I've been enjoying just making it a spiral and not worrying about the end and that makes it a little bit more flexible in terms of installation. So I'm going to put a goof plug or just an end stopper. I don't know why they call them goof plugs, but I'm just going to put an end stopper, a goof plug at the end of this line. Again, this, this is easier to do when it is warm outside. And you can lay this tubing in the sun and get it all warmed up. You could also dip this into hot water or use a hair dryer or a heat gun on it. It can be hard on your hands. I'm a delicate flower, don't you know? There we go. Okay, so now it has a stopper on the end and it won't run out the end of the tube. I'm gonna lay this around here first. Okay, and then I need to connect it to my supply line over here with my straight connector. Now I could just run this back to the here, but then my emitter is here and here and here and here, and that's only two emitters by the shrub. I want four emitters by the shrub. So that's why I'm running a supply line from the, su from the main supply line out to the emitter tubing. I hope that makes sense. Get on there, you. There we go. So I'm going to just tack this down into place. I'm going to kind of make the circle the right diameter so that the emitters are not right on top of each other. I've got one here, one here, one here, one there. I guess that's as good as it's going to get. All right, I'll put a staple right there. And over here. Now this just comes back to here. My scissors, cut that off. And I need one more straight coupler. Let me go get that. There we go. Now, to connect this black quarter inch supply line to my half inch supply tube, I need to get a hole into here. And I have this hole punch which you may be able to see how it works like that. So I'm going to put the supply tube in here and squeeze this and it will poke a hole in the side. I want it to be on the side, not on the top, so that when, uh, when this is connected, it lays flat on the side. So I need to get this on there like that. And punch a hole. There we go. And now I can poke this right in there. Perfect. And now I have four emitters on this one shrub. I'm going to just put this right here. There we go.
Well friends, I have now hooked up 23 small shrubs and trees onto the drip irrigation system. Now remember, at the front of the line down there by the gate, I don't have it completed. I don't have it connected to water yet. So I'm just laying it out so that I'm ready when I do have the water run to it. I thought I was gonna be able to do the whole drip irrigation system in one video, but it turns out it's gonna be taking me too long. I have to order more supplies, and I've got a trench underneath a couple of sidewalks to get it all done. So it'll be in a couple of different videos, but you can just count on this one being a how-to about how to set up a supply line and how to run drip to individual plants. I will be bringing you more content about drip irrigation systems over the next week or two as I continue to work on my own system here. In the meantime, I do have two other videos from last season that you can look back at. I'll put them up here in the corner of the screen and also I'll link them in the description box down below. So I hope that things are going well for you in your gardens. I tell you what, my thumbs are little tiny as little bit sore. Okay, maybe a lot sore from pushing those uh, connectors together on that quarter inch drip line. Boy, it really makes a difference when the um, tubes are not softened from the sun. So there's a lesson learned. But otherwise, things came together pretty well. So I'm going to go take some Advil for my fingers and hands that are a little bit sore, eat some lunch, and who knows what else I'll tackle this afternoon. I might just lay more just like this, or I might take a different job that isn't so hard on the hands. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful day in your garden today, friends, and I'll see you again soon with more information about drip irrigation. Thanks for watching this. I'll see you later. Bye.